you are watching UCU Focus TV. My name is Okuru Timothy and this is the Sports Focus. Well, of course, there's so much that has made um, news around the world of sport that we'll be discussing locally and internationally. Alexis Avery, of course, deciding to step out after the disciplinary committee of Vipers summoned him. Uh, he opted to just resign and, of course, the fraud drum has been ongoing. Uh, that, those some of those results will be coming your way within this uh, edition of the Sports Focus. Otherwise, I am joined by the head of sport himself, Michael Aino Mugisha, a senior podcaster at that, the founder of the Ama Mugisha, Michael Aino Mugisha podcast, uh, he's joining us. Welcome to the show. Ah, nice to be here. Of course, I'm joined again by the producer of the show, just big names on the show today. <laughs> I made sure that I catered for your needs very well. The producer of the show, of course, the founder of uh, the Oak Road Sport on YouTube, you can check it out, uh, Ronald Choi, good to have you on the show. Thanks for having me and it's a pleasure. All right, so... First things first, Alex is deciding to step down from um, the managerial role at um, Vipers. Yeah. What do you make of that? Now for Isabel's scenario, because I read the news before even the someone came in, he had got involved in an accident yeah. as one of the reasons he highlighted in his resignation document. And in the part two of his resignation, the point two why he resigned, because he was as a head coach, you know, sometimes head coaches are not allowed to make transfer decisions, but he was given that authority of deciding who to come to SC Vipers. But unfortunately, Vipers made some transfers of the two Brazilians, which he had not agreed them. He never knew the players, even they, as the, one of the coaches he, he was brought, called, uh, he's a Congolese, yeah, he was brought in to SC Vipers, and he was not agreeing with those, with these, those transfers so coming in according to his statement I read it very well he's right to do so because his points are actually viable many people are questioning uh, the decision we've seen a number of clubs where coaches don't seem to have all the authority transfers are being influenced from up. true, true. Um, it's rumored the same thing is happening at Chelsea you're seeing a, a line of players that boy is that third boy is buying mm -hmm. and some of them coaches can't account for them what, what, what what, what do you think was, was the right move? Uh, how, how could have it been supported? Because okay, for, for me, I very well know, and the world knows, that each coach that is coming to a club, they are what we call term, terms of the agreement. So when you're coming to a, a club, according to what um, Isabiri Alex said in his statement, he said he was given, it was section C maybe, if I'm not forgetting, he was given the right to decide on some transfers to come in Vipers. To be surprised, he saw two Brazilians being signed in at SC Vipers, yeah. which was not agreeing to according to his terms, terms he had agreed in the contract. And for like the international, you can see some coaches actually totally said that I want this player, and they bring in some player, some coaches are brought players. So for maybe we, we need to, to see to review how these term contracts are signed. Yeah. Like in Uganda, we have not seen that previously. We don't own a contract. Yeah. All right, we are moving quickly to the FUFA drum. Uh, Ronald, um, your side, <laughs> the northern side seemed to be doing quite well, uh, <laughs> Lango province and Acholi. Yeah, uh, but but, but we, we are seeing uh, funny results, 1-0, zero, zero, zero. Uh, We hardly see a two-goal margin in a game. What, 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 what do you make of the uh, current FIFA drum league? Well, I think, uh, based on the point you said, uh, you see a one-goal win, a draw most times. This just tells you a lot about our league and uh, the lack of the strikers that we have in the league generally. But uh, well, this edition of uh, Fadram really started relatively well. Uh, uh, we have uh, we've had a couple of games starting on Saturday, and uh, generally, uh, I expect that uh, teams are going to even perform better because we have new sponsors on board. We have Rock Boom, yeah. which has injected around 300 million to the competition so uh, I expect that uh, this edition will kind of be better because in the previous editions you know some some teams were, were really bad some teams really some felt bad like Karamoja you know Karamoja played the other editions but this time around uh, the current edition 
they, they had sort of qualifiers mm. where they were knocked out by Usoga. True. You know, so now this time around, uh, the winners, we have 33 teams in groups, and the first two teams are going to the quarterfinals. Mm -hmm. So the, the approach towards the final thing, the final trophy has kind of been changed. But I, I don't expect a lot in terms of maybe any new qualities in the mm -hmm. tournament, but I just, you know, this is Uganda at the end of the day, but I just expect that players are going to get more game time. You know, for example, the, the team from Lira, the Black Spowers, uh, it has a lot of players in the, in the Lango province mm -hmm. squad. Yeah. So, for them, it will be more of game time. Practice. You get practice and game time. <laughs> Looking maybe, for transfers. Yeah, yeah, as the transfers are still running, mm -hmm. they will perhaps, you know, hint on a few clubs to maybe spot them and a few things. Because if you, if you watch the game against Chigezi, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, players, they... they People really played there well. I, actually, there's a player called Obua Emmanuel. I didn't know about him. I didn't know how he played before, but the way he played in that game, you, you can tell that somebody is up there looking for some spotters. You get. But uh, generally, Fofa Drum is back again, and uh, we just expect the best at the end of the day. All right. Um, in under two minutes, we are going to look at some of the local transfers. KCCA has gone. Uh, out international yeah. two Angolans, two Brazilians. What do you guys make of the transfers? And we continue to suffocate the playing time of some of our local players because um, teams like KCCA and Wakiso Giants and Vipers mm -hmm. take in about 75 to 80 percent of the players on the national side. Mm -hmm. So if they are failing to get playing time at that, and you suffocating, but but some of the transfers that you think have made headlines to both of you, Mike, I'll start with you. Uh, to me, I think uh, if FUFA can do a way of regulating. Like in some leagues, I see there's that regulation. The club should sign a certain number of Like the Premier players. League, a certain number of English players. Yeah, a certain number of local best players. There should be, there should be that rule to regulate. And for KCCA, I've seen they have so far got four internationals. I think they want to compete at the level of their arch rivals, the SC Vipers. Uh, also, they, they are going to play conference, yeah? yeah. So they need more experience, more experience, more. Squad depth. I, I, of course, they want squad depth. But there is one thing I, I don't understand with the transfers of KCC. They have come at a rush. I don't know whether they are planned. <laughs> it is up to AC to KCCA. You look at the defenders they are bringing in. We have had a lot of defenders from KCC having issues. At, at least every season, KCC loses a top defender. Now they have signed an international, we shall see how that goes about. But I'm not surprised KCC is signing players. Anyway, it is an international coach. I think, uh, to add on what Michael said, uh, the new coach, Tragil, mm. I think he has actually been given uh, an opportunity to, to decide, ex exercise yeah. his project. Because sure. all these players that are coming in, I think they are part of his project. Because yeah. if you look at uh, uh, the, the Angolan defender who was brought in to replace Geoffrey yeah, Waswa, yeah. whom they failed to agree a deal with, you know. Um, uh, reports suggest that he was asking for more, you know, talking. Yeah. And uh, the, the, club, the club had to get somebody that would accommodate the token they're giving him. Mm -hmm, so yeah. the, the club went for the Angolan defender. Gonzaga, it's called like Gonzaga. So <laughs> I was even surprised the name looks Uganda. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I think generally the, the four signings of KCC so far, it's a coach's project, yeah. and uh, he has been given that mandate to you know to decide play that yeah to decide transfers, something which Vipers didn't give uh, Isabiri, Isabiri yeah, yeah, which he really wanted, because Isabiri actually highlighted that. Uh, the, the, the players, the Brazilian players Two, that came yeah, in, that, yeah. he wasn't aware of it. And then the, the, the Congolese coach. assistant yeah. that came in, he wasn't aware. Yeah. And I think those are some of the reasons that led Isabiri to abscond trainings and mm. normal running True. of the club. True. Because True. I think he was not bearing that in mind already, making. he was protesting. You get True. by not coming to, to service, he mm. was protesting and he was sending a message. Yeah. Just that he, he didn't do it openly enough, like formally enough. He had to abscond and then the club started uh, writing on uh, disciplinary measures for him. Yeah. That's when he resigned, you get yeah. But I think prior to all that, Isabiri was actually protesting all those things that were happening in the club. Mm. Yeah. Alright, so KCCA is going fully out. You might think KCCA has been bought by Boyd. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Maybe but another player we forgot to talk about is uh, Charles Bali. Yeah. Yeah. The top scorer of AC Villa last yeah. season is going to run an account yeah. sports. 
Ryan Sports. Ryan Sports, yeah, yeah Ryan Sports. Sports. Yeah. And uh, their captain, yeah. Gift Fred, Gift Fred is, is yeah. already Young in Africans, Tanzania, yeah. you know. Yeah. So I don't know what Villa is up to. They are not, mm. not signing and, anyone. And, so and one thing, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, I don't know, our league, it, okay, food, let me say football in general is, is more about money these True. days. Yeah. And if you look at the move that uh, uh, Gift Fred did yeah, and uh, Simon Tamale. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And just Bali. Gift Fred was actually offered thirty thousand dollars as a sign on fee. Wow. You get <laughs> yeah. as a sign on fee, just sign on fee. And then uh, Simon Tamale, I think he was given around ten thousand. You get? By, by, yeah, by, by Ronan side. Charles Bali. About 36 million. Charles, yeah, is it Charles Bali? Yeah. yeah. So, you can, you can see that it's it's more of a money move. Which club is ready to offer that? So, you got yeah. yeah. Yeah, so in Uganda, I don't see any. It's actually Italy, honest. Italy. Though many analysts, <laughs> you know, many, yeah. many analysts would come and criticize the players that, you know, we have we have players here that have had one good season mm. and instead of remaining in the league. But Gift has been consistent, get, to be honest. Yeah. They move out. You get, let me tell you, they move out because of obvious reasons. One, monetary reasons. You get, yeah. these players are also looking for livelihood. You get, true. So, Sometimes it's understandable, but if you put in a lot of context, mm. you'd, you'd perhaps predict that maybe they should have stayed for further season so that they attract the better deals out. True. And you might also think yeah. uh, the deal with young Africans can help uh, give Fred play at the continental level. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, All right, so the hashtag on Twitter is Sports on Focus. We've put this uh, local scene to a close. When we return, We'll be talking about uh, the Manu captaincy and of course Kai Havertz and Mason Mount making their debuts. We'll be looking at that. Let's take a short break. Make sure you turn on your notification button because oh my god, this is going to be super exciting. See you then. You are watching UCU Focus TV. Welcome back from that short break, and of course we are going international right now. We're going to start with the Manchester United captains. We've been joined by very big Man United guru. Paul Messi, good to have you. Thank you. What's right? Uh, all right. First of all, Maguire has been stripped of um, the armband at Manchester United. It looks like they're slowly trying to find a way to push him out of the club. Um, time will tell. But. Um, to, 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 to the fans, uh, this may, Maguire came out with a statement and he was he said he had a discussion with the manager and he was disappointed about the move. It's as if we didn't see it coming, given his performance. What do you make of uh, Maguire's decision? <laughs> Hi, Maguire's decision was, um, was truthfully, he truthfully came out because he wasn't getting enough play time and Eric Ten Hag is a very strict manager Did he and he's up to point. Play time? No, he did not deserve the first because <laughs> because he, he he's not he does not live up to the point of playing with other players. He's out of he's not focused enough. But he does not play. He does not coordinate well with the players, and he's tactically not in the game plan of Eric Ten Hag. Yeah. Michael, I'll come to you very shortly. We, 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 we've seen a number of players at Manchester United doing a better delivery on the international scene. Yeah. For example, Maguire at England yeah. was doing very well during the World Cup and coming back to club level, it's like it's in another different environment. It's like he's playing another game which is not fit. And we've seen that for a number of players. For example, you know Sancho season prior to joining Manchester United exactly. was perfect and then he came and he went down. Are we just blaming, uh, are we just spinning down Maguire or there's some other bigger problem that we are not seeing? First, uh, thank you Timothy for that. Uh, for Maguire's captain is under Ole Gunnar Shusha. It was immature at that time. Remember at that time Manchester United had issues of captaincy. We had uh, Pogba, by then Pogba had issues of discipline. So it was at that time that Man United had no a leader by that time. So Man United jumped into bringing in Maguire as a captain. I would see someone like uh, Luke Shaw. Luke Shaw has been at United for, he's the longest serving player right now after the departure of the care. So bringing in Maguire, it is a record transfer. He has already has that, that pressure of coming at 80 million, a pressure of coming a captain of the biggest club in United, despite of what I'm putting on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Maguire comes in, plays football that is not good, that is not matching the standards of Man United. And you know, all this has been pressure. But when he goes to England, of course there's Hurricane, he's a captain, 
the likes of uh, Raheem Sterling who are as pressure goes off. He, he really yeah. And he's having a good partner, John Stones. Of course, at United he has had he was not consistent on which partner to play with. There's a time when he was playing with Elik Baye, at the time he was playing with Victor Lindorov, they bring in Rafael Varane, they bring in Lisandro Martinez, you know, there's no consistency in the selection of the team. All those things have been affecting Maguire, but for Maguire, saying he's disappointed, I think he should be thankful because the burden has been taken away from him, you know, so he should be grateful, but I see his statement actually shows that he's ready for it any move away from Man United. Alright, I would like us to move away from Man U, but I would like you to ask the panel, give me two players each, whom you would think can step into the captaincy of Manchester United. I'd start with Ronald. Well, I think Bruno Fernandes has been doing a, a great deal of the work right. last season. So I presume I've been predicted he's the first candidate for that role. Second I, player? If not Bruno Fernandes, I would give it to it's a tricky one. Is Man United that bad you? Yeah, but I think Casemiro. Casemiro is a potential okay, yeah, true, true. One season after. Yeah, yeah one season after. Mike. Yeah, yeah I, would, I would slightly disagree with Ronald somehow. But for me, we have three candidates. I'm sorry to, to disagree with you. Because other teams have actually have three captains. All right. Yeah. So when it comes to Man United, I see a potential in Luke Shaw. At the games when United was losing, Luke Shaw could come in and give a statement and you see mm, he's a leader. So I would I would not give that this is the official captain, yeah. but Luke Shaw would be my candidate. Casemiro, because of his experience at Real Madrid and captain C at the Brazil national team, yeah. would fit in my, as a captain. Then Bruno for the great job he has been doing uh, despite all the sometimes he goes off, yeah. <laughs> he goes off. As a captain you're supposed to control the mentality at the pitch. Sometimes he's short tempered, so those are my three candidates. Bruno, Rukshaw and uh, Casemiro. Um, oh. As for me, I'll go with Bruno, um, Rafael Varane because of his experience and the titles he has won and Sandro Martinez for wow. the aggression that he puts in the game and the uh, power. True. Yeah, that's all. Yeah. Well, actually, I want to add on what Paul I think uh, my second candidate instead of Casemiro mm. would be Varane. Why? Because uh, the previous pre-season match mm -hmm. they had against Leeds. Mm. It was actually Varane who yeah, was had the captaincy. On so yes. what does him and uh, Savage. Yeah. I, I wouldn't be surprised if I saw him on the short list of the candidates. All right, so yeah. the common denominator here is Bruno Fernandes. <laughs> yes. yeah. Next time when you get to the show, this is on video, we are going to see who has the like. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, okay. the sports focus is going to uh, a mental health uh, segment. We've all seen the interview with Dele Ali, uh, probably the second biggest interview of a player. And that has made rounds apart from the interview with Ronaldo. Yeah. Um, the Piers Morgan interview. The Piers Morgan interview. This time he was with Gary Neville and some very touch issues were raised. The he was raising questions about his childhood and all that. Um, we, we, we've seen a number of players going down because of the mental health. Just last week we talked true. about um, we talked about Zaga yeah, true. falling from Vipers all the way to somewhere in Chitara FC. Um, what, what do you guys make of make of some of the statements that he put out. I'd like to start with you, Ronald. Um, how, how do you assess the, the, the challenges he's been through? Well, uh, I think uh, Dele Ali's issue, generally, it's family-based. Unlike Ronaldo. Mm. You know, Ronaldo's issue was between him and the club. But yeah. there was some aspect of family. Family, <laughs> but, but this one, for, for Dele Ali, is generally family, family attached. Yeah, you get sure. It's nothing to do with the club. But for me, my... my, my uh, my concept out of all that was mm. the club part. Why? Because uh, back in 2015, 16, that those seasons, Delali was kind of on the peak of his career. Mm. He, he was a uh, England regular. Mm. He was actually a starter in Double the England next team. David yeah. Beckham. Yeah, <laughs> he, he was on top of his game and everything was moving on fine. And then all of a sudden, he, he gets he gets out. He moves to Everton. Yeah. Then yeah, he really had a bad season on that side. When From Everton, he went to Besiktas, he even had the worst one. Okay, he started well, moderately well, but it didn't end well, and then he had to, he had to leave. Trip, uh, yeah. So, Delali's issue generally perturbs me because I feel like his career is kind of ending in a way that's not desired. True. And then the, the family issues as well are trying to arise up. Somebody might think that he's doing that because of his deteriorating career. Mm. You get somebody can say that. Mm. But 
you know families always have issues you, you always have issues because talking about having gone to Nigeria at a very young age being <laughs> sent there for, for disciplinary those things happen in Europe uh, they send if you're very okay those there are families that send their children to Africa for discipline but for Nigeria Del- is the biggest economy in yeah. Africa. <laughs> yeah but for Del Ali's scenario uh, he talks of being sent to Africa for discipline and he's bringing it at this time of you know it's this time yeah true. yeah for me personally I would think that maybe Del Ali is trying to attribute his current failures to the past to the past and not only the past but to the family mm. you get mm-hmm. he's trying to attribute that you know what i'm not doing anything right now i'm deteriorating right now because of you people because i feel like he's pointing fingers right now True. Michael, yeah. Ronald, this is a very pertinent issue mm-hmm. because why at this time is the question because ali at a certain point was being seen as the best playmaker in england and right now he can't even find a place in england he has been he has gone as far as Turkey. Um, do you think he is just trying to do the blame game on, 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 on his, his family and all that? Uh, for Deli Ali, I don't think he's doing a blame game. Mental health has become a patent issue in this generation. And for Uganda, Uganda League, Ugandan football, we really have to rise up. Me, I'm just here to advocate for mental health awareness among us, athletes, footballers, everywhere. So long as the game or a sport, let's advocate for, for mental health mental well-being. Uh, Delhi Ali, there's one aspect I would not ad- agree with him. Coming to Africa, studying in a school, paying $20,000 at that time was not a punishment. He had to have time for his with his family, but there was that mindset maybe he never wanted to come and to, to Africa. One of the parents comes from Nigeria. You're coming back to yeah, literally the your father, home. Yeah, so, true. You no can't punishment. go to the village. Yeah, you want to go to the village. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, he, at this time, Fine, mental health is a big, big issue, but the story, you, you never know, because that story, that that uh, clip was edited. You never know there are some issues that he raised and they were never mentioned, you know. So for Delhi Ali, uh, he should focus on his game. And I, I'm so thankful for Everton. If there's any other club in Uganda that can do what Everton did, supporting Delhi Ali, even when he had been away at Besiktas on loan, it's something that is that should be copped for the Ugandan football and the better of African football. Mental health is something. It is okay not to be okay, right? So, if someone has an issue that is really, really affecting their mental health, clubs should come and work on that. We would not lose Delhi Ali. I don't think he would play like he used to play at Ever uh, at Spurs. You remember that in discussion he had with Mourinho, and Mourinho had already witnessed such characters that he's going to be to flop somewhere somehow, but. Maybe that issue was not given attention. Why is Delhi Ali failing to perform? This is a case that Ugandan, should, Ugandan football should also copy. Like we mentioned in the previous uh, episode that Frank Saga has been having issues with uh, smoking and other stuff which I'm not well versed with it. But what has AC Vipers done? It is one of their biggest prospects from their academy, dubbed to be one of the, mm. the best players in the Ugandan league, but he never performed. Mental health should be looked at. All right, so we are going to look at some of the Chelsea signings that have done amazing. Should I say amazing? I'm putting words in your mouth. But then, then Harvard and uh, I'm talking about Harvard and Mount. Of course, they both had their yeah, the Um Manchester United winning 3-1, uh, and then Arsenal on a draw. But th- 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 just from your point of view, um, how do you rate Harvard and Mount first? In their okay, Harvard. Um, uh, uh, disappeared during that game. <laughs> that someone had just said disappeared. <laughs> yes, just disappeared. You were ten players. He wasn't. He wasn't anywhere to be noticed on the pitch. And then that buzzer on goal by Jorginho messed up everything, so you could not easily identify him. Then um, for Mason Mount, his work rate is awesome, just because he did not score. You just yes. love him. Yes, I just love him. <laughs> Ronald, Red Mount and Tavats. Well. According to my biased expectations, <laughs> I felt like he didn't even meet average in that game. Averson? <laughs> no. Mount. Mount. Mount, Mr. Mount, yeah. You know, and I'm, and I'm not saying this because of formality, but Mount, last season, I'm, I'm basing on last season. The, the, the games were, the Chelsea games were, Mount was totally off, off the game, yeah. out of the game. And... Uh, I wouldn't be surprised. Like I wasn't surprised with that as well uh, against that against uh, Leeds United, especially. Yeah, in Oslo. So, Mount. We are going to contemplate on Mount 
Mount will, Mount will actually rely on people like Bruno Fernandes to make work easier for him, Casemiro, when they come in. When Casemiro, maybe Eriksen, Bruno yeah. Fernandes, when they come on board, you will see the re rejuvenation of Mount. That's, that's when you'll see him well. A number of puddings have raised questions. Mike, I'm putting this to you. Yeah. About giving Mount that number seven, you know the pressure that comes with it. Of course. Manchester United is a very big club domestically in England. And you're giving this guy number seven. He's walking <laughs> in the foot of people like Ronaldo, yeah. people like Memphis, people like Di Maria. And you expect him to come and fit in after playing with certain Chelsea side. That was almost going to relegation. Do you think it was the right decision? And how is that move affecting him? Don't you think the pressure is too much? For Mount right now. First, I'm even surprised you mentioned uh, Memphis Depay and Di Malia, one of the biggest flops at Man United. <laughs> <laughs> I'm and so and, and we, could, we could attribute that to the same factor. Do you think seven, lineage. Should, seven should just be a, a reserve number to draft for that? Do you think? Yeah, for you know, it, it was a player agreement to come to United. It was to be given just a seven. But for me, I was surprised. I will agree with Andy Cole, one of Man United legends. He said. The pressure you're adding to Mason Mount will even affect him. First of all, he's from a poor season at Chelsea. He's coming at a big price. 60 million to me is up to. Up to now, I still say it is, was a lot of money for Mount. Remaining is one year on your contract, 60 million. You're coming from your bad season. 40 million was enough for Mount to come to United. And Jersey 7, you know, Ronaldo actually. Left the jersey, came back and, and yeah, put in the jersey. you know he left the jersey in crisis. Yes. Yes. And also came back yeah. and took it. Yeah. You know he left at United in 2009 Nine. Yeah. and came back and re like he he took back the jersey. Yeah, no meaning, one meaning that the most recent no the most yeah the most recent uh, he left it with the crisis. By the time he left. Yeah. The Jose was not replaced. And he came back and replaced himself. <laughs> as you can say, Ronaldo's so, season was poor. Don't you think even he has been the best player to put on that number seven ever since? Because it's quite a For Mount, I was not. Uh, but look at the game against the Leeds uh, in Oslo. In that midfield, there was Kobe Mino, a future prospect for Man United, a future Paul Pogba, even better than Paul Pogba actually. Sure. Yeah, he's yeah. a future prospect. Me, I've watched his you game from. <laughs> No, his game is actually versatile. He can play number eight, he can play number six, mm -hmm. and number ten. So that midfield was lacking, like, like Ronald said. So to judge Mount for the first game, um, uh, uh, that's not fair. It's unfair, yeah. But right. for the Jose issue, it's going to affect. So our parting shots, uh, I would like to start with you, Paul. Um, Declan Rice. Yes. Finally. Uh, talk about Declan Rice and Arsenal. Declan Rice is a good signing. But though he has that tendency of moving forward and he forgets that he has a role to play at the back. So when they are playing big teams, me I'm worried, Arsenal <laughs> <laughs> lacking a holding midfielder like Pate who is static at the back mm. and you have the likes of Declan Rice. Mm. I'm worried for them. But Arsenal is supposed to be an attacking team. Yes, but you are not supposed to forget your role at the back. True. You must like they mentioned previously, the defense has yeah. win accolade. Yes. All right, Michael, your parting shots. Uh, for me, I'm so so excited. That's why even I'm in a red jersey. <laughs> Andre Onana is finally our goalkeeper, the best football goalkeeper, uh, fo footing goalkeeper. You know, so he's coming at United at the time when the guy is leaving United. We congratulate that transfer, Fabrizio Romano. I, I waited for it on uh, Sunday midnight. When he said here we go, I was sending messages everywhere. I was relieved from the pressure, you know. So when he comes at United, it is a good transfer for them. United should get a backup for Casemiro, Sofia and Amrabat. They should also think of Rasmus Hoyland. Right, before you come in, I'm shocked. I never thought that there'll be a time when Michael would rejoice that the guy is giving money. <laughs> you know, you know I changes. wanted to add, he's, a legend, I wanted to add he's a legend. When he had uh, Fabrizio Romano saying, here we go, I think he was like, there you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go to sleep. I yeah. had to sleep. Right, what transfers do you think I've made highlights around? Well, for me, I'll go to Chelsea. I expect to see Chelsea rejuvenate next season with the coming in of uh, Christopher Nkunku and uh, Jackson, Jackson, the Senegalese forward. Do you really think Jackson then, uh, will pull any No, no, hold well on. And then the new coach, Poch. Yeah, Poch Well, for Jackson, it's a, it's, it's a tricky one to, to predict at the beginning. It will be a puristic start. Yeah. <laughs> at the start right now, you can simulate him with uh, Datro Fofana. Yeah. But uh, I think with a new coach in board, on board, I mean, mm -hmm. the players are going to have a new mentality. You know, it's about mentality. Yeah. You can, you, there's a, sometimes you have to change your mentality from last season to the next new season. One, yeah. yeah. 
So I, I, I believe that uh, Chelsea having a new coach in Pochettino, players are going to change their mentality. Number one, uh, Raheem Sterling. I expect him to perform better this yeah. season. Yeah. And uh, basically, generally, Chelsea, I expect Chelsea to come back next season. Yeah. All right, so the, that's been what we've had all time we've had for in this edition of the Sports Focus. Of course, the hashtag on Twitter is Sports on Focus. Do head over and send in your messages. We love them. This show will return to you next week again. And please catch our, our following shows. Um, the hot seat will be on this week. Of course, we will have the Media Link News Bulletin, probably a very final show. Next month, also, they should not forget the, the Twitter space, space yeah. returns, of course. Uh, we'll be discussing. We'll be focusing a lot uh, around some of the issues that have made um, highlights around campus. How the struggling train of the canons, we shall continue a bit with that. All that in the next segment. Of course, I've been your host, uh, Okuru Timothy. Many thanks, gentlemen, for joining me on this edition. watching you see you focus tv